Their journey to space was only meant to be five years. They wound up flying around for 700. Where did that much food come from? You don't just magically produce seven centuries of food out of thin air. Cupcake in a cup? What's that? What is it? It's people. They're eating each other. It's the only explanation. Cupcake in a cup is people. Wally is about cannibalism. <gasps> There's more. Internet, welcome to Film Theory and to our special three-way crossover event, Cannibalism Week. Yeah, that is not a joke. Three episodes, three entirely separate but connected discussions on eating the flesh of your own species. Why? Because we can. And when you've been doing this for 10 years, your content tends to lead you to some strange places. Speaking of 10 years on YouTube, we just celebrated that anniversary over on Game Theory, but it's gotten me to look back on some of my favorite early theories across all the different channels, and a few really stand out here on Film Theory. The Seinfeld one about how envelopes can kill you? An underappreciated classic in my opinion. I mean, who could have guessed that YouTube audiences wouldn't be super hype about that spicy Seinfeld content, am I right? There was also that time where we taught Leonardo DiCaprio how to win an Oscar. You're welcome for that one, Leo. Still waiting for you to acknowledge my existence. That Fifty Shades of Grey episode where I showed how the romantic love interest uses the same psychological techniques that cults use to break down their victims. Super demonetized, but also super fun. But of them all, one still stands out. Out. It's one of the all-time most viewed videos on the channel. Number 11, just barely missing cracking into that top 10. Wally Feast of Flesh. Back from a different era of YouTube when you can get away with putting severed human arms into thumbnails. The theory is all about the food situation in my favorite Pixar movie, Wally, pointing out that in the film we see humanity herded onto giant spaceships owned by the Megacore by and large. They were originally planned to provide a five-year getaway vacation to humanity while robots cleaned up the garbage fire that was Earth, but as it turned out, things were polluted beyond repair, turning that five-year getaway into a 700-year multi-generational voyage. Hey, there, autopilots. Got some bad news. Operation Cleanup has, well, uh, failed. Rather than try and fix this problem, it'll just be easier for everyone to remain in space. Okay, I'm giving override uh, directive A113. Go to full autopilot, take control of everything, and do not return to Earth. My original theory took those facts and ran with them. A five-year vacation stretched into a 700-year voyage means that there are 695 years worth of food unaccounted for. That's gonna be a problem because the Starliner that our story takes place on, the Axiom, seemingly has no renewable source of food given the fact that people on board are unfamiliar with the basic concept of plant. Where's the thingy? Plant. Plant, right, right. Where is it? Oh sure, we hear briefly that the ship has a regenerative food buffet. Regenerative food buffet. Unchanged. But that system is also run entirely by the autopilot, a computer that's adhering to Directive A113. As we just heard, it means taking control of everything to ensure that humans do not return to planet Earth, even if plant life is found. So how do you regenerate food when there seems to be no other source? Well, you do it using people. After all, a centuries-long journey with hundreds of thousands of passengers means that a lot of people are kicking the bucket along the way. And when presented with the problem of what to do with all those human cadavers, the robots who run everything can kill two birds with one stone, dispose of the bodies while feeding the remaining guests. After all, everyone on the Starliner consumes everything through a straw. Add enough artificial flavoring and who's gonna know the difference? But since that video's release four years ago, you've asked a lot of questions down in the comments, and I've realized a few things that I missed in that original theory. So today we're getting a little bit meta. Call it a film theory theory, going back into the archives and updating an old theory by filling in a few holes and answering some of the questions you've left along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Morty time. Leave your theories in the comments below. I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty. Okay, first things first, evidence points I missed. After going back through the movie and all its associated media, I noticed two key details that really hammer this conspiracy home. The first is that there are no old people on the Axiom. None. There's two guys who are balding with gray hair, but they don't look old. In fact, if you scan across the character models that we see whizzing by in the movie, not one is wrinkled, elderly, slow, or frail. They all have smooth skin and nice hair, even if that hair is gray. And mind you, this is 
isn't just a selective sample of a few dozen characters, we see hundreds of Axiom passengers over the course of this movie. You'd think that at least one or two of them would be elderly in some way, but no, none, nada. It's almost as though the ship disposes of those individuals who get advanced in their age. So that's suspicious detail number one. Number two, though, flies directly in the face of that replenishing food buffet that I mentioned earlier. When we join the Axiom in year 700 of the flight, everything is served blended up in a cup. There is no solid food, which, sure, okay, might be some sort of replenishing nutrition beverage that they've always had, except we have proof that that isn't the case. Looking at some of the bonus video clips released alongside the movie, we see that the Axiom started by serving solid food. In this promo video to get humans to join the Axiom voyage, we see that the ship used to serve solid meats. Odd to transition away from that policy if food really is replenishable automatically. We also know that there's no organic food waste on the ship. Throughout the film, we explore all the various garbage chutes present on board, and we see that it's all composed of mechanical waste. Metals, parts, old robots, no peels, rinds, old unused food, dead bodies, nothing. Just saying that the replenishing food story is, uh, shaky at best. Now, in the comments, a lot of people were asking about oxygen. Fugol, Mr. Cool, Murphoria, Hussein Ahmed, and more. With many saying that the fact that the humans are still breathing oxygen must mean that there's plants on boards, and then presumably farms. Well, actually, that's not true. For one thing, as I pointed out earlier, no one has ever seen a plant before, so it seems unlikely that there'd be a section of the ship actively growing plants. But more importantly, supplying enough oxygen for a single human requires a lot of plants. On average, it takes the equivalent of about eight trees to satisfy the oxygen needs of an adult human, which would mean that if the BNL Starliners were making oxygen the old-fashioned way, they'd need to have more plants on board than humans. More to the point, though, the how to get oxygen in space thing isn't something we have to speculate about, because it's a problem that's actually been solved by real-world scientists. The International Space Station has been in orbit for over 20 years, and there are seven people living there now, all of whom are breathing just fine without having to bring 50-plus trees with them. On the International Space Station, oxygen is created using electrolysis, a chemical process that involves using electricity to split water. You know how water's chemical formula is H2O? That O in there is actually very breathable oxygen. In the previous video, I already established that the Axiom would have no trouble harvesting water from asteroids, and electricity is also a solved problem thanks to solar power, so the presence of oxygen on board doesn't actually prove anything in this case. That said, there is one massive correction that I have to make from that previous video. Whether cannibalism does, in fact, solve the Axiom's food problem. Can man survive on man alone? In general, a human cadaver is good for around 80,000 calories, something that I brought up in that first episode. More recent studies, though, have been done since I uploaded that original video. Uh, clearly, I was the one who put cannibalism research back on the scientific community's map, so you're welcome, guys. These more recent studies estimate that the number is now closer to 125,800 calories. But regardless of which number it is, it still leaves us with a huge problem. It's nowhere close to what a human needs to eat in order to survive to adulthood. If an average person is eating 2,000 calories per day, it means that a single human cadaver is only good for about 63 days' worth of meals, barely over two months of food. It would take a minimum of 397 cadavers to provide a lifetime's worth of sustenance. And mind you, that's for an 80-year lifespan. The dates that we see for previous captains suggest that people might be living for as long as 200 years. At that rate, the Axiom starting crew of 600,000 people would only feed a population of 1,511. That seems to really bust the cannibalism theory. While the population on board the ship would most certainly be going down generation after after generation, there's no way it could be going down that fast. So, is the theory busted? Well, I'm not quite done. You see, while I was wrong in that original theory to not take into account whether human bodies could sustain the population, I was also wrong about the calories that those human bodies would be providing. Sure, a human is worth 125,800 calories, but that's an average 145 pound or 66 kilogram person. The people that we see on board the Axiom are just a wee bit heavier. They're barely able to walk. Currently, the world record holder for the heaviest human is a man named Juan Pedro Franco, who weighed in at, take a guess. Seriously, I want you to take a guess at this one, because everyone I've asked so far starts at around like 700 pounds or 317 kilograms. Take that and double it. At his heaviest, Juan Pedro was 1,300 pounds, 590 kilograms. Now, obviously, the passengers on the Axiom aren't that heavy, but the reason I bring it up here is that Juan Pedro, as part of his efforts to get healthier, lost over 700 pounds.
pounds, managing to slim down to a weight of 570, or 260 kilos, which was where he was able to regain his ability to walk. As such, I'm going to use that weight for our Axiom guests who are also just barely able to walk. So knowing that, the other thing that we have to factor in here is that fat has more caloric density than muscle. In fact, fat is the most caloric food source. That's the entire point of fat. It's your body storing up energy for the future. A pound of meat is good for about 650 calories. A pound of body fat contains closer to 3,500. That's five times as many calories. This means that a single Axiom passenger suddenly goes from providing over 100,000 calories to a whopping 3.85 million calories at the time that they get ground up into a human smoothie. Add to that the sedentary lifestyle of everyone on board, and you drop the number of calories that the passengers need per day from 2,000 to something closer to 1,400. Ironically, the fact that the Axiom passengers have such a high body fat to muscle ratio both makes them more efficient as a source of food and also reduces their need for food. It's a win-win across the board, I guess. Suddenly, a single Axiom passenger goes from needing to consume nearly 400 people to survive for one lifetime to only having to eat nine. And that, shockingly enough, seems very reasonable. I mean, once you've eaten your first human, the rest go down easy. Consider this. Last episode, I mentioned that during the course of the 700-year journey, the Axiom has had, at minimum, two million dead bodies. 600,000 people all living lifespans of about 150 years. Turn them into food, and that's enough to feed over 222,000 humans for a lifetime. And if you're an autopilot program meant to keep as much of the population alive in space for as long as possible, that seems like a pretty darn efficient use of your available resources. So there you have it, friends. I still stand by this one. Between all the evidence during our first go-around and all the new additions here, including the surprising lack of elderly people on board and the shockingly efficient food source that human fat provides, I have yet to really see anything disproving this one. You know what they say, human meat can't be beat. But hey, that's just a theory. A cannibalism theory. One of three, all released today, so make sure you check out the other two episodes in this buffet of flesh. And uh, speaking of hungering for the flesh of your fellow man, a special thank you to our sponsor for today's episode, the appropriately thematic State of Survival. How's that for a segue? A free-to-play zombie survival game available right now in both the Apple and Google App Stores. Stranded in the aftermath of a deadly apocalypse brought on by a corporate conspiracy, you're forced to rebuild your home, fight against the rampaging hordes, and eventually save all of humankind. Between now and October, State of Survival is crossing over with one of my all-time favorite franchises, The Walking Dead, to amp the zombie killing up to the next level. As part of the crossover, there are daily quizzes on all things Walking Dead and State of Survival, which promise both in-game and real-world rewards, including Amazon gifty cards. You can also go Easter egg hunting, where Walking Dead references are hidden in every corner of the game world. Collect them and fill out your book. There's even a special appearance by the guy who made crossbows cool again, Daryl. Start saving humanity today by downloading State of Survival for free right below this video, and the first 50 to download the game will get a $50 AMC gift card. No joke, $50 for just testing out the game, plus one lucky winner will get a Nintendo Switch thrown in for good measure. All of it for downloading a free game. And if you're not one of those first 50, or heck, even if you are, use the code TFTSOS, that's um, the film theorist's state of survival, to redeem a massive in-game starter pack when you first download it. So there you have it, friends. Flesh-filled fun for everyone for free. So download State of Survival and start saving humanity today. Because, as Wally proves, the robots aren't gonna do it for us. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.